Well, hi everyone, I'm Judy Elliott and welcome. And for the next few minutes, we are visiting at Dalton Plastic Surgery and Dermatology Associates here with Dr. Reginald Sherrill and Dr. Mary Beth Cole. And thank you both for letting us come out and visit with you today. Thanks for coming. Yeah, we always enjoy it. You know, Dr. Cheryl, it's, it's been a while, Dr. Cole, since we've been here, so um, I know some exciting news is uh, we're going to be uh, telling about today. And um, Dr. Cole, I understand, actually, that you're going to be um, opening up uh, a new office. That's right, Judy. We're really excited mm -hmm. um, that we have the opportunity to announce that here with you. Um, I'm going to have a new office that's going to be Dalton Dermatology, and uh, we're really excited about the opening of that. Right. Now tell me a little bit about, um, uh, Dr. Cheryl, we were talking a little bit prior to the interview starting. Uh, Dr. Cole has been here in, in this office for how, how, how long? Two years. Two yeah. years. And uh, expanding and now um, I know it's exciting for, for both of you to branch out and have another office here. Dr. Cole, you're all o yeah. opening up. We have been very blessed, Judy. We really yeah. have. Yeah. Um, to have wonderful patients and a wonderful staff that we work with and um, the practice has grown and it's just such a blessing. And we've uh, outgrown the space that we have together. Yeah. And so in light of that, we are going to, um, I'm gonna launch a new office so that we'll have more space in which to better serve our patients. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna open October 1st. So it seems like a long time, but it'll actually be here very soon. And um, all of the appointments that I'll have with patients after October 1st will be in that new location. Okay, now what is the name of your new practice? It's gonna be Dalton Dermatology and Day mm -hmm. Spa. And it'll be here very close to the current location. So it is gonna be located at 1108 Professional Boulevard. So um, for those of your viewers that know the area, it's going to be between what is AOSM and Dalton Family Practice, mm -hmm. just very close to the current office. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, very easy to find. That's right. Once you know where Dalton Plastic Surgery right. is, it's just goes two doors down. <laughs> two, doors two doors down. down. That's right. <laughs> well, I know um, this is so exciting. Now, um, who will you uh, who will you be seeing there? The right. practice. So at the new location, um, my dermatology patients and cosmetic patients will see me there. And um, so any appointments, again, that are already scheduled after October 1st, those patients will come to the new location okay. and will be seen there. And Dr. Cheryl's patients that see him for plastic surgery and cosmetic um, will come to the they'll current location. Here. They'll yeah. still come to the same location. So, but as we said, since it's not far, if you get uh, at the wrong spot, then it won't be hard to, to end up where you need to be. So. Right, right, okay. And then I know, Dr. Cheryl, you will co be continuing all of your services as, as a doctor of plastic surgery. Yes, and we will be using the same computer systems. We have a lot of the same personnel, and um, we are trying to make this as seamless as possible. Uh -huh. So if, when people first come, there's so much paperwork to fill out right now. It's kind of burdensome. and. If they go to see Dr. Cole and she wants them to come down here for whatever reason or vice versa, we'll be able to get that paperwork transferred so they don't have to fill that all mm -hmm. out again. That's right. right. And that's right. Because we have gone to electronic medical records and so all of that will um, be in the same system. So mm -hmm. those patients who have gone through that and put that information in the computer once won't have to do that again. Right. I know they oh, appreciate that's that. Good. That's right. And we will carry the same um, insurance. Uh, companies, as far as the insurance companies that we accept now, as one right. office will accept those yeah. same uh, carriers at the new office, so that that will be right. the same as right. well. Well, that that will make it very easy for the patients to make that transfer if they need dermatology attention. Right. We still our goal is still to provide quality, <laughs> comprehensive skin care, and we want we want to do that. So we want to provide that all around service. Um, and we'll try to do that now in just two locations. All right. Well, tell me about, um, let's talk about skin cancer a little bit because I know that that's something that um, actually both of you I've talked with in the past about skin cancer. But tell me about, uh, Dr. Cheryl, how, how common is skin cancer? Well, over the course of one's lifetime, there's a one in five chance that they'll get skin cancer sometime in their lifetime. And the good news is that survival is as close to 99% as you can get. Most of it is basal cell and squamous cell. And in those cases, it is right at there 99 to 100%, particularly when it's caught early. Most of them are caught early. Even if it's caught 
after a person has gone for eight or ten years, many times their prognosis is still wonderful. We had a gentleman that had uh, large skin cancer on his back that was, you know, about the circumference of a softball, and he's fine. Everything was clear. It's just very slow growing, and when we deal with, you know, some of the cancers that occur of the lung and of uh, the pancreas that are very deadly, it's wonderful to have a cancer. You go, we can help you so much. Uh, even when you're dealing with melanoma, most melanomas do well. If somebody has a melanoma in situ, 100% survival, and you just can't beat that. And um, so we want to catch these things early. One, if you catch them early, it's a much smaller procedure. Sometimes it can be just a few minutes, just a little cure and Dr. Cole and I have talked about uh, skin cancer extensively and we really have a very similar philosophy as how to treat this where we're not trying to be overly aggressive. Sometimes you can be so aggressive you may win the battle but you kind of lose the war. You do such a huge procedure that you can destroy one's life and mm -hmm. we don't want to do that. Right, and I think that is such a, a great message that the two of you are seeing that as a very positive um, uh, take. To, a lot of times people, if they are having skin cancer or they've told, been told they've got skin cancer, that's a very, it, it, it can be very scary right. for right. people. Yeah, anytime you hear the word cancer, it's frightening. It and um, so, you know, our job, I think, as um, providers in the skincare arena is to provide comfort and reassurance that in most instances, as Dr. Cheryl said, this is a very good prognosis. Those mm -hmm. basal cells and squamous cells that are caught early, um, you know, those are easily treated. Right. Yeah. Now tell me about, um, you know, there, there are different types of treatments, uh, and you mentioned treatments. What is, um, how often would you need to have uh, invasive uh, treatment? Well, that's a great question, and um, of course it depends on a case-by-case -case basis, but as Dr. Cheryl mentioned, the majority of the skin cancers that we treat are the basal cell and squamous cell, mm -hmm. and those have a great prognosis with, as he said, either a curetment or with just a local surgical procedure. Mm -hmm. um, there are more invasive treatments that can be used in specific instances, and fortunately, you know, those do not have to be used um, all the time. The, Things like radiation, um, which can be used to treat skin cancers, are very specific in their need. Mm -hmm. And um, I have utilized that. I know Dr. Shell has as well, but it's very specific in the times that you have to do that. And so um, you know, I think it's important for patients to know that most skin cancers do not require things like radiation or other aggressive treatments. Um, Mohs surgery is another example of that. It's a treatment that is very specific in how it was designed. And that was designed in order to treat skin cancers that were more aggressive or that had recurred mm -hmm. after they had already been treated on places such as the nose, um, specific areas on the head and neck. So n most, certainly not all, skin cancers need to be treated with things like Mohs surgery or radiation. Unfortunately, in our instance, working together, um, you know, those can really be selected, and Dr. Cheryl can do a procedure where, if need be, those tissues um, can be removed and uh, looked at at the hospital and looked at pathologically and treated that way. If mm -hmm. you know that's the specific instance that needs to be done, and occasionally, I think I've had a handful of patients um, since I've been here over the course of two years that we've had to right. do that with, but it's very right. few. Very few. Very yeah. few. Most of them, fortunately, as we said, um, just an in-office treatment with a surgical procedure, a curetment, sometimes even a topical cream, and they just do wonderfully. Mm -hmm. And so I would caution patients um, just to um, you know, know what type of skin cancer they have and to be, um, to be wise about the treatment options that are out there mm -hmm. because most of the time they don't need aggressive treatment, which is a blessing. Right. What do you suggest, uh, uh, and I'm asking either of you, um, that you should um, uh, uh, make sure that you're looked at or examine your own self? What are you looking for? Um, you know, if you're you're doing a self exam of your, you know, just looking at a new mole that might come up, or and that not may not necessarily be cancer that I'm talking about, but how often should you kind of get checked or check your own self to see if there's new things that you see? 
Well, when it depends a lot on the age of the person and what the family history is as far as how often. But I tell people, take a good look at yourself in the mirror every two or three months just to see if there's something different. Know what is normal for you. If you're married, play doctor nurse. You know, check each other out. I always like to look at people's backs because you can't see your back. Mm -hmm. And I've had people that have come in uh, and they said, I have a changing mole on my back. And I said, you know, I got good news and bad news. This mole is benign, but it's also moving. It was a tick and you oh, can't see it oh because my. it's on your back. And so I always tell people, you have to have somebody to cover your back and you can check these other places, but you're looking for something that is really changing or something that's bleeding. Right. If something is bleeding and it doesn't heal up, then it probably is a skin cancer unless it's proven otherwise. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the darker moles and everyone is scared about melanoma. We talk about ABCD, asymmetry, border irregularity, and those are almost one and the same. But if you look at a mole from distance and you go, well, that looks round or that looks oval, that's one thing. But if you say, you know, that looks like Australia or South mm -hmm. America, something that has a pod going out or a lot of variation, like a geographic map where you're showing mm -hmm. the mountains and so forth. Those are things that we get much more concerned about. There is also a keratosis that can look very scaly and it can look all kinds of different ways and it's perfectly benign but that's mostly what we see when people mm -hmm. come in and say I've got a mole that's changing most of the time it's all good news and they go I'm going to sleep so much better tonight because it is something that is so common and very uh, easy to treat and 100 percent benign. Right. And the American Cancer Society typically recommends that adults have a skin cancer screening as a preventative medicine mm -hmm. treatment about once a year. Now patients who have had multiple skin cancers, who have, for example had melanoma, um, get more frequent screenings, but mm -hmm. about once a year is right. a typical screening period for a patient. Right. Well this certainly has been a very, very informative interview. Um, as well as announcing your uh, new office that you're branching out and been with uh, Dr. Cheryl with doctor plastic surgery for two like years. Two years. Mm -hmm. years. Now, yeah, this is quite so fast. Yeah, it's quite exciting for you to it have is. your own it practice is. now yeah. um, in We're addition excited. to. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're excited because we, we have the same philosophy and we want to continue yeah. to provide good skin care and uh, quality care to the community. So we're right. excited. Walk us through how this is going to be happening. The 1st of October? That's right, the 1st of October. And our phone number there will be 706-226-SKIN and that's 7546. So okay. they can call that number and that will reach the new office. So beginning October 1st, October your, 1st. any appointments that are made will be up, up there. there. What about so, calling now for appointments? They can they call go? that number now. Oh, it is, it okay. is there. They have some, we have someone answering the phones there already. Okay. They can call either number. Yeah. I mean, We're we'll still make here. It right. Sure. You'll make We're, it happen. That's I know right. You, we, will, we will work together to make it happen. Right. Well, you guys have been a great team. And I know you'll continue uh, in we'll serving still the be best. A team. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> thank you so much again. Thank you again thank for letting you, us Judy. be out. Thank you, Judy. And we thank you for being with us here. And until next time, I've been here with Dr. Rachel Cheryl and um, Dr. Mary Beth Cole. And uh, we'll see you next time. To advertise your business on TV, contact Elliott Media at 706 529 4237.